Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeremy Cordo. Peter Clayton's behind the camera. We're in the garage. It is the Court of Public Opinion. It's on Facebook and it's a podcast as well from wherever you get your favourite podcasts and live streaming tomorrow, jeremycordo.com for three hours live with a new telephone uh, to take your calls, which I hope you will, I hope you will make. Uh, when we finish the show, on the garage door, <laughs> which when the lights go off and the program finishes, uh, Pete will leave the telephone number there if you want to give us a ring on any subject at all that's in the news or on your mind, do give us a call. Uh, Pete, have you uh, any news on the uh, koala, Harriet? Harriet, yes, I photographed her this morning. Yeah, she's uh, looking very, very healthy. Good. Standing up to the cold because these nights have been chilly. Yeah, no, she's fine. She's fine. No sign of the baby? Not yet, but hopefully soon. But doing well? Yeah, very well. The, the, the wound is healing beautifully. So. Yeah, because if you, have, if you didn't know, uh, Pete rescued this koala from a tree um, quite a few metres up there, and the koala people... Uh, Laura, I think it was, wasn't it? Laura, yeah, Laura and Chris. Yeah. Laura and Chris took the uh, koala, nursed her back to health, and then released her back to where she was. It's a little piece of territory there, very territorial, I believe. Very territorial. August the 17th it is, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get to the dates and anniversaries later. I'm, I'm, I'm grumpy. Uh, I'm on a diet. The list of things that I can't eat just terrific. I mean, eating is such an enjoyable thing to do. But, you know, I, I have to do something. I don't like putting on kilos, and I have, particularly this winter, I don't know why. But anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm tackling it. So if I get grumpy, you'll understand. <sighs> I wouldn't get grumpy with you, though. Uh, Here's something that's a little problematic. Triple the budget. It's now up to $600 million. $600 million for an Aboriginal cultural centre on North Terrace here in Adelaide. This is the site of the old, or part of the site of the old uh, uh, Royal Adelaide Hospital. <clears throat> the Premier is uh, thinking about the whole thing. He's seeking advice from higher authorities. And I, I guess by that he means Aboriginal elders as to whether or not the project should go ahead. Now, he's the Premier. I think the Premier and the Treasurer should sort that out. Prioritise the money. I think it's ridiculous. $600 million for an Aboriginal interpretive cultural centre when there's a perfectly good centre not being used called Tandania, about two streets away. Now, I don't care what the elders say or what the elders want. We can't possibly afford $600 million dollars for this centre. Premier, if they want that centre, could I suggest to you that you tell them to take the money, the $600 million, out of their $35 billion a year allowance and spend it? But not South Australian taxpayers' money. We're recording today's show um, Wednesday, so I can't say congratulations to the Matildas. I can't give them my sympathy, commiserations, because the game was last night and I don't know what the result was. But we'll talk about it on the live streaming show tomorrow. Insurance is becoming unaffordable. This is something else I want to talk to you about tomorrow. Insurance is becoming unaffordable. One in four households can't afford it. Premiums have gone up 26 to 30 percent 
last year, and that's going to leave a lot of people vulnerable. More to come on that. Uh, we're all familiar with this thing, awful thing, called fetal alcohol syndrome. Well, now we have ice. Worse than alcohol. Ice is much, much worse than alcohol for an unborn child. And of course it's worse for society. Society has to deal with children who will be permanently retarded because of their mother's addiction or obsession. I don't know what plans the authorities have made to deal with that. The idea of uh, the Victorians opening a second so-called safe injecting room uh, is not going to help. The soft attitude towards drugs generally is not going to help. But somebody is going to have to pick up the bill. The Centre for Independent Studies I don't know much about them. I've talked to them many times over the years. I don't know how independent they are. But anyway, they have a very interesting take on teachers. They say in this report, which is something again we can talk about tomorrow, teachers are unprepared for the classroom. Now this has been discovered and it can only be really that either the kids who go into the teaching course are not really suited to it, don't really want to be teachers, can't find anything else to do, or I don't know. In, in my day, <coughs> I didn't go to university, but uh, the friends that I had who did always went and did a BA. And I said, well, what does that qualify you for? Oh, I can, I can be a teacher. Do you want to be a teacher? No. So I don't know. <clears throat> Teachers can be the most impressive, most <sighs> important people any of us will meet in our lives, really. They are profoundly important. They probably need to be paid a lot more. But when you think of the importance of that role, golly, we're taking teachers out of teaching college and we discover that most of them are unprepared for the classroom. What do we expect the outcome to be? Hmm? Uh, Republican Anthony Albanese said it was too expensive to illuminate the Sydney Opera House to celebrate the coronation of King Charles III. Too expensive, he said. I don't know what it costs to illuminate a building. Well, it's not too expensive, not only to turn the lights on at the Opera House, but also to have a national public holiday. If the Matildas win the World Championship, the World Cup, uh, which would be a wonderful moment. And as I say, I can't comment on the, the latest step up the ladder to achieve that because we're recording the day before. But a wonderful achievement if they can pull it off. But I tell you, a national public holiday would cost millions and millions and millions of dollars. I don't think there's a country in the world who, who would have the, the number of public holidays that we have here in Australia. I would respect the man, the Prime Minister, more if he just simply said, you know, I don't like the royal family, I'm a Republican, just to be honest. There's a new governor in Victoria who's sworn, a sworn, Republican. She had no trouble apparently swearing allegiance to the king. We are surrounded by, what would you say? The word hypocrite comes to mind. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. I was listening to 3AW the other morning. Neil Mitchell. He does the 9 to 12 program. I like him. He's a bit of a fence sitter. Uh, you know, I, I, I say this on one hand and I say this on the other hand, you know, but, but anyway, I don't know, maybe that's policy, station policy. He was talking about the welcome to country stuff. Jacinta Price wants to stop it, Senator for the Northern Territory. Overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly the audience on 3AW has had it. 
They want it stopped. Neil got uh, Gary Jones, or actually it's Johns, isn't it? Yeah. Gary Johns on the air, stalwart, Labour Party stalwart, former minister. He says he is over it totally. And they should stop it because they are alienating people hand over fist. They're certainly alienating me, I can tell you that. Another thing that came out of that broadcast, something I didn't know, is that when a club or an organisation, and a couple of these people rang in to say that this welcome to country business cost them money. Some of them had to pay $5,000. Big corporations and big organisations significantly more. Now, I didn't know that. I would say, where does the money go? Who said it was okay or even legal to do this extortion? Because what are the implications if you simply say no? You know, these people, they come along and literally and figuratively blackmail you. Shocking. Now, I, I think we've got to get rid of the acknowledgement, and I think we've got to get rid of the welcome to country, and the idea that we have three flags representing Australia and placed behind the Prime Minister and various ministers is insulting, divisive, and ridiculous. And I, I will have more time tomorrow to go through this with you. But how about this? The government, that's us, you know, our money. We spent $45,000 in 12 months on welcome to country ceremonies. They've got to be kidding. The federal government has spent $45,000 on welcome to country ceremonies and this was a joke set up by Ernie Dingo beyond belief. That's the last financial year. The total cost could be a lot more, with more than half the major departments and agencies unwilling or unable to say if they spent anything on the practice. Figures obtained by Sky News from budget estimates, sessions in federal parliament show that the welcome to country ceremonies typically cost between five and seven thousand five hundred but can reach up to 10500 for the opening of Parliament. Half the Federal Government's departments ignored Parliament's request to provide the amount spent on Welcome to Country, with two saying they could not give the figures. What they meant, of course, is they would not give the figures. Sky News says one department official told them that Welcome to Country costs couldn't be revealed because of commercial and cultural sensitivities. <sighs> of the agencies that did respond, the Department of Employment and Workplace Relations spent the greatest amount on Welcome to Country, $14,000 on 20 ceremonies. Home Affairs spent $12,000. The ABC forked out $7,000. Treasury, 20, uh, 20 1950 other departments said they spent 1600 to 2800 now look ladies and gentlemen this is a disgrace we are one country one nation under one flag we can't be welcome to our own country come on we will talk tomorrow at length about that and i'm sure we'll get calls August the 17th, um, happy birthday to the compact disc. Pete, where will we be without the contact, compact disc? Well, so do I, i got thousands of them. They come up at auction all the time too. Great collections. 1982, the first compact disc CDs released to the public in Germany. And I think it was Philips? It was Philips. Philips who invented them? Yeah. Monica Lewinsky scandal, 1998. U.S. President Bill Clinton admits in taped testimony that he had an improper physical relationship with the intern 
and on the same day it admits before the nation that he misled people about the relationship in that famous ah did not have sexual relations with that woman hmm. Hmm. I suppose it Depends on how you define sexual relations. Uh, um, Richard of Shrewbury, Duke of York, son of King Edward IV, was born. One of the princes in the tower who disappeared. 1473. <clears throat> uh, 2017, anti-immigrant, <coughs> pardon me, anti-immigrant One Nation Party leader, Pauline Hanson, widely criticised for wearing a burqa into the Australian Parliament on this day in 1917. What's wrong with wearing a burqa? I think it makes a point, doesn't it? 1979, Monty Python's, uh, Python's Life of Brian, directed by Terry Jones, starring uh, Graham Chapman, Michael Palin and John Cleese and funded by George Harrison's Handmade Films, premieres this day in 1979. Mae West, the American stage and screen actress and writer, she's done him wrong, I'm no angel, the singer, way out west. Uh, she was born in 1893, famous for saying, which apparently she didn't say, Come up and see me sometime. But so many of these things, like, play it again, Sam. <laughs> A lot of those things they never said. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure she did discover Cary Grant. Or at least part of him. <laughs> True story. <laughs> uh, Davy Crockett, American frontiersman, adventurer, politician. Born in Tennessee, he died in 1836 at the Alamo, but he was born this day in 1786. Uh, Adolf Hitler orders a total blockade of Great Britain, 1940. Same day, Rudolf Hess, the German Nazi official, deputy Führer, who dramatically escaped to Britain in 1941, suicides at the age of 93, the year was 87. George Orwell publishes The Animal Farm in the UK in 46. Maureen O'Hara, Irish-born actress. Miracle on 34th Street. That was a great movie. I loved that. Beautiful movie. Miracle on 34th Street. The Quiet Man, Only the Lonely. Born in Ireland in 1920. The first air mail in a balloon took off from Lafayette, Indiana in 1959. Robert De Niro, American actor, taxi driver, Raging Bull, born New York, 1943. 1983, Ira Gershwin, American lyricist, Embraceable You, I Got Rhythm, They Can't Take That Away From Me, dies in Beverly Hills at the age of 86. Sam Goldwyn, Polish-born Jewish-American film producer, The Best Years of Our Lives, uh, the movie magnate, born Warsaw, Poland. He died in 74, but he was born in 1882. He had some wonderful sayings, you know. He, uh, there's a whole book of them, you know, like uh, bring on the empty horses uh, and uh, other things. I must think of some of them. Um, do you know any of Sam Goldwynisms? <laughs> he murdered the English language, but he was great. He was a wonderful guy. Yes. Anyway, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much for being with us. I look forward to tomorrow. I've got to be out at the crack of dawn, and I'll see you at 9 o'clock at the dining room table, where we will be live streaming, jeremycordo.com for three hours, and waiting for your phone calls. Jeremy Cordo, Peter Clayton behind the camera. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow. And next week, here, back in the garage, because you want us to do that, and we will. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye.